The JN1 variant is the latest uh, variant. It uh, belongs to the same Omicron family, but because it has certain mutations, which give it uh, uh, sort of additional uh, uh, ease of transmission, it makes it more transmissible, more infectious. So it's been classified as a variant of interest by the WHO. However, till now, the public health risk is still low in the sense that because we all have immunity now because of the vaccines and the natural infections we've had in the past, and that immunity still seems to be quite strong. It's still protecting most of us from getting severely ill. What we are seeing now is a surge of infections, and because uh, the testing has been stepped up in the recent few days, as well as the genomic surveillance, the more we test, the more we are going to detect and also we're going to find more JN1 uh, variants in the country. In other countries, in fact, over the last few weeks, they have been reporting that JN1 has gone from being about 3 to 5 percent of uh, total circulating strains today to the, it is the dominant circulating strain globally. So uh, I think we should not get uh, too bogged down with, our, with the numbers or get panicky about the numbers because when you test, you will find and you will report cases. Uh, what is important is to look at the correlation with hospitalizations, with deaths. There is likely to be some increase in hospitalizations because as you see increase in cases in the community, correspondingly you will see some hospitalizations and perhaps a few deaths as well because there are already there are always vulnerable people in the community who get ill and who die, just like other respiratory viral infections like influenza. So I think we, one has to take a balanced approach this is likely to be the trajectory of COVID in the future. Every few months, six to eight months, we may see a new variant. We may see a surge. And then hopefully that surge will be only a surge of infections, not a big surge of um, sick people or, or deaths. But we have to be vigilant. And it's really important to modify our responses based on what the public health information we're getting. So I would say that now, we need to take some preventive measures. We need to wear a mask if we are in a crowded place, especially if you're a vulnerable person, you have some underlying illnesses or an older person, or you have an old person living at home with you, then do wear a mask when you go out into a crowded place or into somewhere where it is uh, going to be a closed uh, environment, not in the outdoors. Um, try to limit the, the very crowded uh, places, etc., especially in the coming days, I think some precautions will be good. If you have a cold and cough, try not to go into a crowded place or at least wear a mask when you go out. And of course, if you're having symptoms which need to be getting sick, uh, then you need to be seen by a doctor so that uh, early intervention, early treatment can, can be done. So I think today we know a lot about the disease. We don't have to panic like what it was the situation in 2020 it's very different now in 23 and in 24 and also we have to understand that we we are in a situation where covid is endemic it's not going to go away and so periodically we will see this happening and the public needs to know that uh, what are the precautions that they can take i think everybody is familiar now with that